Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Chris here, and today I thought I would talk about uh, archiving our whiskey and um, why it's something I do and why it may be something you might want to do in the future. Um, yeah, there's lots of reasons for it, and uh, yeah, it's something I've been doing for a while here. Probably, I wouldn't say as long as uh, as some of uh, friends of mine that uh, that do it. Uh, I know there's a few friends out there that uh, that actually archive their whiskey as well. Uh, it's something I've been doing probably for the last, well, probably maybe two years now, a uh, year and a half. Um, so, uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, I thought I would go through my process and reasoning for it. And um, and maybe something that you may, you may want to do yourself. So... Um, I'm going to put this down and uh, I will show you the whole process right here that I've got going on. So uh, I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I've got this on a stable platform here now so we can talk a bit. Uh, so yeah, um, this is something I've been doing for a while. These are all archived whiskeys here. I've got a few more boxes like this here in in, uh, in the bunker or in, the, in my vault. Um, and uh yeah you can see here they're they're, they're kind of full um this one here i've just uh just started here uh, a little a little while ago uh so it's almost almost full um so we'll add these ones here uh to this box and these are just shoe boxes i mean everybody's got shoe boxes it's super 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 easy um to just throw your whiskeys in i put um <coughs> Like you can see here, I put uh, paper towels around them uh, a little bit so that they don't bang around and they, they fit a little more snug inside the uh, uh, shoe box. I know some people make their own custom things, but uh, I am all about uh, ease and uh, affordability and cheapness and everything because whiskey and rum and tequila and everything else has gone up so much that uh, ain't nobody got time for that. So, um, yeah, so some of the reasons why you may, uh, want to archive your whiskey, uh, is for, you know, long-term storage. So say you've got, um, say you really, for example, say you really like the, uh, the Weiser's, uh, triple, triple barrel. Uh, this has actually gone extinct now. So Weiser's has, uh, discontinued the triple barrel. Um, I had a bottle of it. And so I thought, well, I'd archive a few just for the fun of it. And, and then that way I can always go back later on in time, a year, five, 10, 20 years from now and sample it and remember what it tasted like. Um, some whiskeys, uh, for example, um, I don't know if I've got any in here or not, but, uh, um, that's a sex and see, I've got, I've got bourbons, I've got, uh, Tullamore Dew here, uh, the Caribbean cask. Um, uh, yeah, I've got Irish whiskeys, I've got Canadians, I've got bourbons, I've got Japanese in there. Uh, you know, obviously lots and lots and lots of scotch. Uh, but say, say, um, um, for, I don't know, example, say Blanton's for, for some reason or another, uh, in five years they decide to change out their mash bill or, or something's changed on it. Um, well, you've got something that has been archived from before it was changed. So, um, you can go back and retaste it and, uh, and see if it, uh, you know, you can compare, um, tasting notes to, to the old and the new. But, uh, the other thing is, is you're, you're archiving it and it's going to last, like these will last forever. Like you don't want to like have it half full or anything like that. You want it fairly full, you know, just like you can see here, I've got a little tiny bit of space left there. Um, so it's really not going to oxidize at all on you. You don't want to fill it all the way to the top. Um, uh, you know, you want to just leave a little tiny, tiny bit, just like they would in the bottle. Um, and, uh, and it's fine. And, uh, sometimes what I'll do is, um, say, say for example, this, this Blanton's again, um, say I really liked it right off the bat and it was absolutely perfect. Um, that is when I would probably take my sample and put it into the, uh, into my, um, little archive or say the shelter point here, the smoke point. 
oh my god if you guys can get a smoke point from shelter point do it this is a canadian peated whiskey that tastes like a scotch it is so freaking good I, i've done a review on this one here i'm not i don't know if it's out yet or not but i have done a review on it and it is one of my favorite canadian whiskeys absolutely love this um it's peated and how they it's 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 not peated it's um it's smoked and how they get that smoky peaty notes to it is they have you know charred um casks but they also burn the driftwood that they find on the their coastline because they're right on the pacific coast uh, and it's all full of that briny salty ocean flavors that's intermixed with the barley that they have on there that blows in from the from the, the pacific coast and it has all that salt and cool air and everything on it that is an incredible whiskey i mean all of the shelter point stuff is good if you can get a hold of shelter point do it but say say i like the shelter point for example and i like it when it's down to here when it's opened up a little bit well that's when i would archive this so um yeah so it's all kind of subjective but uh, the big reason is you're, you're, you're archiving something for the future. You can go back and, um, and, uh, and, and taste what it was like before. And some of these whiskeys, like, for example, uh, this Triple Wood, it's gone. Like, you, it's, it's gone, gone. So I have, um, I think I've got two or three in here that I've gone ahead and archived some bottles. So when this bottle is gone, then that's it. Same with this uh, Karchus. I think I've got, I think I've got two, two uh, sample bottles in there archived. So when those are gone, then that's gone. But you know, in ten years from now, I can go back and go, well, I've got the 2023 Karchus, the White Port Madeira cask, or I've got the Lafroy Triple Wood, that's no longer in existence, and I can be trying that twenty years from now. Uh, and it would taste just as good now as it did, you know, when I opened it. Um, uh, another reason for it, some people trade them, you know, like, uh, I know a lot of people will trade samples, uh, back and forth. It's kind of a, kind of a thing, you know, so, uh, if you're in the whiskey world or the rum world or whatever, a lot of people trade samples back and forth. Um, that, yeah, that's, uh, I've, I've seen quite a few YouTubers and they're, they're trading samples. Uh, there's a guy out in, uh, Vancouver Island in Victoria and his, his name's Andy but he goes by the name of Food Quig and he does sample Sunday and people send him samples and he trades samples with people and then he does a sampling um, on uh, on on his Sundays um, case in point these these really aren't traded samples these are this is my sample case here and this is all samples from um, my whiskey club so um I've, I've, see i've tried some of these already uh but these ones here you know the guys have given me samples um you know this kind of stuff here so i know like this is from high coast this is we did a um i just actually just brought in a bottle of high coast today i just just shot an unboxing video of this but this is uh this is all from sweden so i was unable to attend uh that uh, function there for our whiskey club so they they uh, they gave me the samples here to try so I'll be doing uh, reviews of these online so I'll be trying these with you guys so these are all basically here still ones to review with you guys so um, but yeah it's like a sample is, is thing is, a, is an actual real thing so um, yeah those those are all one ounce samples here you can see um, yeah these are all one ounce and the ones I do are all two ounce samples, so I put put out a, a little bigger, bigger sample, just because uh, one, um, the reason why initially why I got these two ounce samples is because I wanted to share them with you guys, because uh, I knew at the time I wanted to start a YouTube channel and I hadn't started it yet, but I wanted to give a little bit more than just one ounce, um, so that you can either, you know, have it all at once, or you can. Um, you know, have a little bit share with a friend or put it aside for next time and then have it later on but uh but it works out good for me too because now i'm i'm archiving two two ounce samples uh for all of my whiskey as well so 
Um, like right now I've got, I think I have three two ounce samples here of triple wood, I think. I thought I had two, but maybe I have three. I think I've got two cartridges, but I think I put away three, uh, three, um, uh, samples of, of the triple wood. So, um, uh, so I've got basically six ounces that I can enjoy in the future. Or if I wanted to trade with someone, I could trade them, you know, two ounces of triple wood for two ounces of something else or, or whatever, you know? Um, yeah. So anyway, I thought I would, uh, um, uh, show you kind of how, how I do it. And, uh, it's kind of no, no, really no secret, but, uh, but I also do rum. So I've got some rum here. I've got a 21 year old Eldorado that needs to be archived here. And a lot of times when it gets down to, uh, this amount in your bottle, um, you know, uh, unless you're going to be drinking it right away, you've only got a few, maybe a month, maybe left on this, maybe two months at the most before it uh, oxidizes on you. So you really kind of want to preserve, preserve that. So I've got those two bottles there. Um, I just got this guy in here. This is a really inexpensive bottle, but boy, is it ever good. And it was good right off the bat. So I really kind of want to preserve it before it uh, opens up a bit. But this is the 90 from Highwood Distilleries out in High River, Alberta. Uh, I used to live in a little town called Okotoks, which is just south of Calgary. Uh, and I did some corporate flying out of there for a company called Air Alberta years and years and years and years and years ago. Um, and uh, yeah, so... Um, High River was just south of Okotoks. So I know High River very, very, very well. Uh, and the other one here is this Hibiki Harmony. Uh, I don't have very much left in here, and I'm not sure when I'm going to get to it. So that's another reason why I want to uh, to put a sample out. I've already got a two-ounce sample of this when when I when I had opened it, and it was really, really good. So, uh, But there's, like I said, there's not much left here, and I've got so much other things that I... That I enjoy and I really don't want to see that one go to waste and oxidize on me and so I thought I would put it away and you know hey if I want to drink it next week well at least it's been preserved or next month or a year from now or whatever um, I don't have to worry about it being spoiled so uh, what I did is I went ahead and I made these little labels here um, yeah pretty cool eh uh, and, uh, so I write down all the information on it. Basically what I write down is the name, uh, if there's any real details to it, like if it's like from a very specific bottle or a uh, cask or something like that, I'll put that on there as well. Um, but if not, if it's just like, just say, for example, just the 90, I'll put the 90 five year old, uh, 40 ounces or 40% ABV. And then when I opened it and when I archived it. So, and I keep track of all that kind of stuff. I have a, an Excel program that I've written. So I have when I bought it, where I got it, what I paid for it. Um, if it's gone up in value, like what, you know, the, the one, five and 10 year prices of them. So I keep track of all that. Uh, if I got it on sale, so what the what the sale price was and what the regular price was, and then I have a another program. It's just basically just a Microsoft Word program, and I put all the tasting notes in there. So I have all that, so I don't have to write it down on on the label here. Um, but when I do uh, send these out to trade, or when we do um, um, when I do giveaways. So if it's something that you guys are into, just let me know in the comments below. If you're into uh, when I do whiskey samples or rum samples or whatever, uh, if it's something that you guys may be interested in, I could put together a little box full of samples. And uh, I don't know, I probably fit eight, eight to 10, I think in a box, something like that. Uh, and then um, I could uh, send it out to one of my lucky subscribers. Um, so if that's something you guys are really interested in or into, then, um, uh, then, uh, just, yeah, just leave that in the description below and, uh, and then we can certainly do that for you guys as well. Uh, cause I think it'd be kind of cool. And then we can, um, it's just something extra to give away to you guys. So, 
Uh, I'll be right back. I just got to go grab one more bottle. I've got four out here, but I see one here in the back that I want to archive here as well. So just hang on. I'll be right, right back. All right. Yeah, I'm back. Uh, the other one I really wanted to, uh, to archive here, and this was absolutely fantastic right off the bat. And you can see that we've kind of got into it a little bit, but a really good friend of mine, really close family, um, uh, they went down to Cuba over Christmas time or no, it was over New Year's. And, um, and my really good friend, uh, and, and he's not much older than my son, you know, uh, but he's such a great guy. He's become a really close friend of mine. Uh, absolutely incredible family. Um, and, and their son, uh, like Scotch, like I do, like he, he's a very old soul that, that kid, he, he's, he's, he's like a, you know, a 40 or 50 year old guy in a 22, 23 year old body. Uh, such a nice guy, really good friend of mine. We got everything in common. We hang out, we talk, super smart guy. Um, his name is Vabo. Uh, he's absolutely incredible. And, uh, uh, he's, he's a law student and you know what? He's going to be someday. I hope he will be the next prime minister of our country. Such a great, great guy. Comes from an incredible, incredible family. But uh, Vebo was so kind and thoughtful that he brought me home a bottle of Havana Club Smoky Dark Rum. And I absolutely love rum. And I love smoky whiskey and smoky rum. And what a thoughtful thing for him to do. So they, um, they came over for my birthday, actually. I had a birthday party here uh, for me. And uh, I had a couple, uh, two families come over and we all hung out, had a great time. Uh, Vabo bought this here for me and we, uh, we you could see how we, we got into it there with uh, some of the family members and uh, myself and my son and Vabo and uh, uh, other, a uh, couple other uh, people that were there, a couple, you know, this uh, uh, couple other members of uh, another family that came over and it was just great. But yeah, he just brought this from Cuba, thought I would like it. And we all shared it, had a great time. This was absolutely amazing. I've never, I've never had uh, the Havana Club uh, smoky rum, and I, I absolutely loved it. So I definitely want to archive that as well. So, um, yeah. So how I do it? I've got this little, this is little funnel. Um, some guys can free pour it. I am not that steady of a hand. That's why I'm not a doctor. Uh, that's why I became a pilot. And. Uh, and now a photographer. So anyway, so what I do is I just uh, basically, you know, put the funnel in and and just kind of, kind of fill it up and just kind of watch it as it goes, and that should be good like that. There we go. Put that aside. Um, I've washed out all of these these bottles here, so they're all super nice and clean. Uh, not that they weren't clean to begin with, but uh, you know, I, you're putting booze into it. You're putting a food product into it. So I make sure that these things are absolutely spotless and super, super, super clean. And, um, uh, and all, uh, um, there, there's no contaminants in it anyway, but I, um, yeah, they're all heat steam cleaned and everything like that. So that they're, um, I used to make wine, uh, back in the day. Um, and I had this, uh, you know, you, I would put a, like a cleaner through it and then steam it and heat it up and everything like that, these bottles. Uh, and that's what I do to these little bottles. I do the exact same thing so that they're absolutely immaculately, um, super, super, super clean. So yeah, uh, cause I don't want to have my booze contaminated by stuff and I'm, I'm sure you guys probably don't as well. So, um, so yeah, so then I just write this here, uh, Havana club. Um, Cuban smoky dark rum. And uh, open it January 14th, my birthday, and uh, February the 8th, 2024. And what's the ABV on this guy here? Um, 40%. And that's basically it. And then I take it off, put the sticker on. 
and that's basically all I do. And then I uh, I put it uh, into uh, these little boxes. So that's basically basically it. Um, let's see here, I'll do uh, highwood distillery. The 90, and I open that up February um, 5th, 24, and February 8th, 24, and this is 40%. So, yeah, I mean, my writing's not very good when I send them out to uh, people, then they are um, properly. Uh, written down and uh, you can read it a lot better but this is quickly done for uh, um, for the camera so uh, it may not be as neat as you guys would get it or as neat as I would normally write it so yeah so let's do the 90 here really liked it right off the bat so that's why um, we just had it the other night. Dan was, my buddy Dan was over and we had a few, few whiskeys together and we started off with this guy here cause it was, um, supposed to be, you know, super light. It's only 40% and, uh, um, and, um, you know, and then we worked our way up the ABV and the, um, and, um, yeah, the strength and, um, uh, smokiness, peatiness, and stuff like that. So you start always start light, and and uh, so yeah, there you go with that one. And uh, yeah, that's basically about it. I, I'll do the rest of these things off camera. Uh, this El Dorado, my wife got me for Chris uh, for my birthday one year. Um, so it's been really, really, really well enjoyed. So I definitely want to archive that. This one here, if you if you like rum, uh, check out the Ironworks. I'm I'm going to do a review on these things here anyway at some point. But this is the Blue Nose Rum, and it's right out of uh, um, the east coast of Canada, close to Halifax, and they put their rum in a tall ship, and they put it in casks in the icy cold Atlantic, and that's how um, this rum is aged. And you see it's just jet black, but this is really, 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 really nice, really nice rum. And uh, so, yeah, we'll definitely be archiving that. And then what I do is I have uh, another little Excel program that I've written. And then I've got everything that I've got archived, uh, when I archived it, and um, when it was open, when it's been archived, ABV, all that kind of stuff. So that I know exactly what I have in there, how many ounces, how many two ounce bottles, I have some, most of them I only have one, but sometimes I've got two, sometimes I have three, uh, it just depends. And, and then if I've traded with anybody, um, uh, I'll put down, you know, what I sent and what they sent and, uh, and then, uh, when it was sent to me and when I received it, that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, kind of, kind of keeping organized, a little dorky, but I think it's the, the pilot, you know, in me, like, but before I became a pilot, I went to university to become a biologist. So we kept very good notes, um, as a biologist, I worked as a summer student with Ducks Unlimited and, uh, that was such a great job. I had a team of technicians and I'd run out and I would do all the soil sampling and all the invertebrate sampling and talking to farmers about the uh positive uh, reasons why uh you know you should um if, if they wanted to to put part of their land to um to to have for waterfowl and stuff like that and and irrigation and everything like that so there's a lot of you know a lot of them are really really excited and happy about doing that and it wasn't going to cost them anything uh, and uh but there was no jobs for biologists so at the time and i wanted to go to queensland australia and become a marine biologist and um but my father was a pilot so that's why i ended up becoming a pilot but uh what we kept very 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 detailed notes in in the in the uh, in the field and we had their field notebooks and stuff and then we come back and we put it on the computer and it was all uploaded and it would be sent to uh, all over canada so people can uh, other biologists can look at it and then future biologists could look at it from the work that we've done 
and then my flying, you know, obviously we keep very detailed notes for our pilot log books as well as our aircraft log books and everything like that. So I, I think I've just con kind of continued that into this whiskey stuff as I keep very, very, very detailed notes of pretty much everything. Um, and then I've got these books here. So this is my whiskey journal, but I've got one for rum, I've got one for wine, I've got one for tequila, I've got one for gin, I've got one for everyone's cigars. But uh, it's basically, you know, like, uh, you know, the name, you know, whiskey uh, entry number, whatever, the date you've had it, all the different notes and stuff like that on it. And um, yeah, that kind of stuff. So, um, so I have these notebooks here as well, so I can easily go in and uh, and look, you know, geez, when when did we have that again? Like, oh, the 95-year-old uh, here, uh, oh, I had it on February 6th. Well, that's what I put in there, February the 6th, and um, that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's, uh, uh, so it makes it easy, uh, easy to archive. So, anyway, that's how I kind of do uh, my thing. And, uh, and then I, you know, put it in here in these little shoe boxes with everything else. And, uh, and I've got the shoe boxes numbered. So I know in number, you know, number t five shoe box, it's the, say the Freeman I'll have on there. This is where this booze is located and yeah, that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, so hopefully that uh, that helped you out. Maybe give you guys some ideas for yourself. Maybe you might want to start archiving yourself. Maybe you want to start trading. You know, uh, it's totally uh, it's totally up to you guys. Uh, I I like it. I think it's there's definitely some value uh, to it. Um, and uh, you know, and if it's this is something you guys are interested in, uh, when I do my whiskey reviews and that I put a little two ounce sample aside for for my subscribers and then send out to you guys uh, when, when the little box is full, kind of like how we do the cigars. Uh, if that's something you guys are really kind of into and interested in, let me know. I was certainly happy to do that and uh, and send them out to you guys. I've already pre-recorded quite a few videos of, of that and me saying that, but uh, um, um, without really kind of asking you guys if you're in, into it or not. But if you are, uh, let me know. And, and uh, I will certainly 100% uh, love, love, love to do that for you guys. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really, truly, truly, truly appreciate it. Uh, please like and subscribe. Share this with anyone who you think that may have some kind of value or interest in it. And um, yeah, and we'll talk to you real, real soon. All right. Um, thanks again for watching. Have yourself a great day. and We'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.